In the past month, we've seen all kinds of ransomware attacks from oil and gas and the pipeline shutdown that causes gas shortages all this past month to entire hospitals that have been literally shut down from these attackers. And I want to talk about it in this video and what we can do to kind of uh, recover from these things. Because I did a video about ransomware protection, how to identify it, what to do to protect yourself. But in this one, I want to kind of go over how we actually bounce back from ransomware protection and back up our data properly. Because this is something that I'm always talking about, but it's something that uh, always needs to be reiterate, reiterated. And, and when it comes to backups, I always love the saying. Uh, a backup that hasn't been tested is just wishful thinking. So with that said, let's dive into this video. We're going to get on the desktop, explore all the different methods. I'm going to go over the 321 backup strategy, which is you need your data in three places, two local, one remote. And that's just an accepted standard across the entire IT field. So with that said, let's get on the desktop and get into it. Now, first things first, if you're using Windows 7, I encourage you to get like a little Raspberry Pi and install something called Metasploit because this is how a lot of people get hacked. Anyone using Windows 7 is just an easy target. So don't use Windows 7. That's the first thing I have to say. Uh, the next thing I have to say, centrally locate most of your data into like a network attached storage. I really prefer Synology. I've mentioned it in a lot of past videos, but it goes to reiterate how I actually back up to here. A lot of my computers, I'm constantly directly backing up, but in a business side of things, I highly recommend this next app. And I'll put timestamps below. So if one of these apps you're like, oh, I already know about that, just go ahead and skip to the next timestamp. But the first one I want to mention is active backup for business. Now, before I show the actual active backup, file restore, it should be noted that it does come free with many Synology boxes. So very, very powerful. On top of that, you have entire images that can be done. You can create templates for a multitude of PCs, or if you just want an image-based backup that you could restore, if you had to nuke and pave, this right here is perfect. So with that said, let's get into the actual file restoration process. Like these were just recently done, and I'm gonna go here, I have about three versions. And I can go ahead and restore one of these just by going to the restore portal. And then we can go back in time. If I wanna go back to yesterday, I can go ahead and dive into this and say, hey, let, let's say there's something on my desktop that got encrypted from ransomware. I could easily go directly into here, go into users, Chris, and then go onto my desktop. From the desktop, I would have whatever it might be on there, and then I can just restore whatever it might be that was there, or go ahead and copy it locally while that computer gets revamped. This is a very, very important, and this is almost like snapshots for all your individual machines, so even if one person's affected that doesn't necessarily make it throughout the network, this would actually be a very easy restore process. But also, one thing you need to think about is what happens if you have network drives, because I use a lot of network stuff. What happens if it gets attacked by ransomware? What do you do then? Obviously, you can't just restore that one PC because you're talking about all the files on your network then, which can happen with map network drives. So I'm gonna come into what's called snapshots. Almost every network attached storage has this type of functionality. I prefer Synologies because they make it pretty darn simple for you to actually restore but I can easily come into whatever it is, let's say my main pool where I have quite a bit of data, or let's actually go into my Final Cut Pro where I have most of my video snapshots. Let's say there's something in here, uh, I got trigger happy deleted something, or uh, I got hit with ransomware, whatever it might be, I can actually come into here and then just go snapshot list, and then go, you know what, let's go back an hour or two. A lot of these snapshots, how I set them up is they're going to be firing off about every hour or two, usually, usually pretty rapid succession. And I usually retain about the last hundred snapshots, which snapshots are just real quick points in time where we can actually look at it. So if I just hit browse, I can actually go into here and then pull up like, let's say my 2001 projects and pull into here. And let's say I change something out of this file, I'd easily restore it copy it locally. Again, all those options are available directly here. 
So snapshotting is super important, highly recommend it. And if let's say you're using Linux and you wanna just snapshot your Linux, uh, you can use BetterFS. This is the same technology. Uh, what Synology did is just made it a little bit easier for folks, but BetterFS has that snapshots built into the file system and those atomic swaps can actually happen and you can revert in seconds, if actually less than seconds, it's actually milliseconds. But besides snapshotting, you can actually do local replication. Getting back to that three, two, one rule, you want it in three places, right? Two local, one remote. And the second remote one, because I don't consider snapshots really a true backup, I think that's just like a quick, easy get to, uh, much like uh, some people would consider RAID backup, which I really don't, and RAID's just redundant disk uh, arrays, which is not a backup either. But replication to another device is also a very important thing. So I actually do real-time replication on here. So this actually gets all the way pushed to my secondary Synology box. So I can easily go into that and let's say this entire box blows up or gets hit with ransomware. I can actually flip over to that other local storage and do that. So let me go ahead and pull it up. I'm just going to come into my Synology 2 box and pull up Synology or snapshot replication, you can kind of see what it's replicating. Obviously, these two are local shares. This just came over from the other NAS box. But the cool thing about this is everything is mirrored from the other box. So the stand up time or the actual real time uh, re restore time would be seconds. Or you could just literally shut down the old box, remap everything to this box, and that's that's your restore time. Everything is just right there and very, very easy as like just going back into my Final Cut projects. I can just pull up my projects and there we go. Everything's just right there and it's a secondary storage. Obviously, with this, you're buying two of everything. Whatever your storage, you got two hard drives, you got all that. But that's the cost of doing business in a lot of ways. Just having one storage is just a nightmare to deal with. That's why I always recommend replication. And that way, if you have hardware failure, you have a ransomware attack, you have anything, you'll have a local copy directly. However, it doesn't end there because these are just our two local copies. Now, as far as other local copies that I would recommend in business, let's say you didn't want to invest this much money, you could do traditional tape backups and those types of things where you'd have cold storage where it just gets shipped or put into like an Iron Mountain type situation where it is there but the recovery times are considerably less. That's why I like the replication scenario a little bit better, but I, I would be remiss not to mention cold storage because that is a very good replication or actual a disaster recovery scenario, such as ransomware attacks or hardware failure. Now getting to the one offsite backup I have, I use something called hyper backup. Uh, however, you don't need to use hyper backup. Let's say you wanted to use AWS, GCP, Backblaze, whatever it might be, you pick your poison on your cloud backups. I really like Synology C2 just because the interface is actually pretty nice. Uh, but you could actually just do this for your disaster recovery backup. And going to their actual website, let's say this entire building blew up and I just didn't have access to anything here. And my remote backup or my local backup wasn't there. No problem. I can actually just log into here, go into my actual drive here, which this is my backup. I can hit browse. And now we can actually flip between a lot of different things. So if I'm looking at this, I can actually go into probably Titus is my main one. And I have a lot of different things that I use for a lot of my video production where let's say I accidentally delete things, which does happen from time to time. I am known to delete things. I can go back any point in time and actually pull from an online backup and grab all of this and go, hey, what was in, let's say my AA videos to make, this is actually gonna change from, from day to day. Let's kind of flip through it and see what we have. And let's come back to a recent one. You can see that's changed quite a bit. And let's, let's flip back a little bit further. Let's go back to May 5th. And you can see that. Those are pretty much kind of my videos on deck, so to speak. So if I accidentally delete one of them or whatever it might be, this actually gets backed up every night. As with any business, you want to be backing up, you know, all your really important data to a disaster recovery source just in case there's actual infrastructure problems or infrastructure gets completely annihilated. Uh, you'd have some kind of restore and Synology C2 just encapsulates it perfectly. But I also wanted to show another option. This is actually Backblaze, which I've used in the past. Uh, 
using a different uh, application interface. I will say for this one, actually spooling up like a really large amount of backup sometimes can be a little bit cumbersome, um, but you can flip around, same kind of interface, uh, just not quite as good as you know the Synology C2. But again, pick your poison, choose what works best for you or that you're familiar with. Uh, these are just kind of some examples of proper backups. So I just wanted to give you some ideas of what to do when it comes to these backups. One thing I kind of showed in this video was that replication. Typically, if you're a business with more than one location, what I would do as an IT manager is put these boxes in different actual locations and be replicating them. The beauty of replication too is it doesn't necessarily have to be used as a disaster backup, but you can actually use it as that and also have local storage for that remote office. So everyone's working on the same thing and you have all that replication going on, which can be really beneficial as well. And that's kind of why I want to bring this up because I see too many businesses just having one thing. There's no reason for a hospital to be down for a week or a pipeline to be down for a week when you should have a three, two, one backup solution in place. That is just bonkers to me that this has transpired over this past month. And that's why I'm making this video to help you out. If you have your own business or you work for a business, maybe you might mention this to them, or maybe you're the IT for a business. Well, you want to have some type of solution like this. Again, three, two, one, two local copies with one in the, the actual cloud. So you have three total copies and it's extremely important and why I'm making this video. With that said, let me know your thoughts. What did I miss out of this? Is there something that you would have liked to see that maybe I didn't show in here? Let me know in the comments. And with that, I'll see you in the next one.